Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about my storage cluster and you can see it in the background here. <laughs> You can see it in the background there and the different units I have back there is a little bit uh, different in the capabilities they have and I'm also going to take you on a journey from the first unit I bought to the second and when, uh, where I actually ended up and what I'm running at the moment. But all of these units are used in my storage cluster at the moment. So I need to pick them out once at a, one at a time uh, so the cluster can actually uh, reintegrate them and keep all the data while I talk about them. I have more units than I need to have to have enough redundancy so I can remove one of the units, but I still need to remove one of at a time. Yes, let's start our journey here with the uh, Raspberry Pi 3. So uh, first off, I need to explain a th few things here. First off, I, I added some things here so you can actually see uh, things that you might recognize in some way. There are some fidget toys for me actually, um, because as I have some part of ADD, uh, it's not AHD, AD, uh, just a a a ADD, uh, and that's uh, something that makes you inside, makes you being inside of your brain a lot. Uh, so sometimes I have a hard time to focus during long meetings, or if I need to think about something, I usually think better if I can do something with my hands. So having some fidget toys is really beneficial for me. So in this case, I have added some of the things that I have, and perhaps you have some of these things as well. So you have something for scale. First off, we have this fidget spinner. It was really popular a couple of years back. Then I have a deck of cards here. It's an uh, Axlorter, and, and I actually have these because I really like the, uh, the small pictures here. They are so nice. It's a, uh, it's, a little bit of an art form these and I have a lot of uh, different uh, decks of cards usually I uh, have a little bit of a more worn out deck of card that I use uh, to play with um, but actually shuffling a deck of cards is a really good way to fidget I also fidget with these kind of uh, markers for uh, poker and so on so uh, shuffling markers could be really fun as well like that and I have uh, of course dice could be uh, nice to just throw some dice and think about things and uh, I have learned how to solve a Rubik's Cube uh, because yeah <laughs> if, if you go on the internet and look up videos how to solve a Rubik's Cube there is a lot of them and I thought it was a fun thing to learn so now I know how to solve a Rubik's Cube and it can be really soothing just to uh, fiddle with it and we have a simple pen as well could be nice to be just uh, using it with, like a fidget thing as well and uh, spinning it and so on so that's things that I need to keep my brain busy and as I have ADD I'm inside my brain a lot if I have what's hyper as well so ADHD uh, I would have problems with distractions and I don't really have problems with distractions. I mostly have problems with being in my brain a lot. Uh, so now we have that sound out of the way. Uh, it's quite hot here. Uh, so this is the Raspberry Pi 3 and I spent about $75 to get this card here and the actual shell uh, from a place called, so, so this card down here down here and the part up here and all the different cables and so on and the shell around. I, I spent about $75 for that and you also get a top shelf with a little bit of a fan and I, I bought that from Geekworm and they sell these kind of shells and with shipping and all, everything I got it for $75 and I think it was 69 or something without shipping. So it's not that expensive. Um, but this was for the Raspberry Pi 3. And Raspberry Pi 3 has 
about uh, one gig of memory and it's not a really fast uh, processor either and it's an ARM processor and that's important because if you have an ARM processor you can't really um, you can't really just install a Ceph on this. You need to actually build it because ARM is not supported uh, at the moment by the Ceph cluster. So you need to build your own and that takes a lot of times. So it takes weeks, but it can actually do it even if it's a constrained device. And then this uh, Raspberry Pi cost about $50 uh, in Sweden. So all in all, $125 is not that much for this but it's not uh, good because it, it can not really run a Ceph cluster. You can't run, for instance, a manager because a manager uses Node and Node needs more than one gig memory. And you can't really run an OSD on it because you need a couple of gigabytes of memory in order to actually index a hard drive. Uh, but I have installed the client on this so I can mount the Ceph cluster and use this as a backup drive. And then I have mounted my wife's old SSD down here. So this card here is actually for mounting SSDs. So you can have one SSD in this package. And I looked up a more reasonable package um, for the Raspberry Pi 4. Still an ARM processor, so you need to build it. But then you get four gigabytes of memory, a little bit of better CPU and so on. So that would be a better case. And that, um, I think was $183 to buy with the packaging and everything from Geekworm. So if you are interested in building a Ceph cluster with Raspberry Pis, that's what you need to do. You need to pay buy the later version and that might work for you. But I found another solution with uh, some other things and my company actually helped me out. They bought the computers. I had to add the actual drives to it because I wanted to do some backup. So I wanted to own the drives, but they bought the computers. So I will switch out to the first node that we try with. So I will integrate this into my cluster again and take another node out and we will look at that. Next up, we have the mini PC PN40. VC556Z uh, V with its a Celeron, Celeron um, computer with 4 gigabytes of memory and it actually has an M2 64 gig SSD in it. So it's um, a computer that has space for the operating system in the computer without an extra drive. In the Raspberry Pi, I had a memory card that was my. Uh, computer and then I had my S SSD drive that I could use for anything um, but in this case we have standard uh, x86 computer Intel computer that we can just run install Debian on and has as a node packages complete uh, complete we can just install whatever packages that are needed and get it to work uh, so this little thing here is really nice it's it looks nice, it has some ports on the front and a lot of ports on the back. Uh, but I'm only using the network and the power because this is a little bit of a server. But I needed to install an SSD as well. So if we turn this over, you see here that there is a space to put in an SSD. And usually you install an SSD which is a, a normal standard five and a half uh, inch uh, SSD and then you get some amount of terabytes on it. But I wanted to have the largest that I can find for a good um, price. And I actually found this two and a half uh, HD, uh, HDD, uh, so normal um, drives that I can buy that were four terabytes to a reasonable price. So the uh, computer here, my uh, company bought for about 200 bucks, and this was about 160 bucks for the SSD or the um, HDD. So the uh, 
hard disk, which is a really nice price for a hard disk of that size. So the thing that is a little bit annoying with this unit is that there is a hard uh, connection here. So if I take this out, it's just something that you push in to connector over here and then you push the hard drive in. We can see here that we have the memory card here. I guess that the, uh, uh, the unit, the uh, other hard drive is on the other side of this card. So you might need to remove everything if you want to change the M2, for instance, uh, because it's not visible on this side, but it seems like that you can add an extra memory here if you like as well, because there is an extra memory slot. So I could uh, potentially add more memory to this uh, unit but it four gig is enough for a four terabyte drive so if i put this in again the the uh, thing that is a little bit annoying here is the back plate because the back plate goes on like this nothing strange about that but if we look at it it has these uh, rails here where you should put the hard drive but in my case, I can't really put the hard drive there because the hard drive is too thick. So I had to bend these out in order to get the hard drive in, which means that the hard drive is pretty much hanging loose inside of the unit because it doesn't really fit. So that's a bad part with this uh, little setup, but I can get this uh, lid on here and I can screw it down so it's reasonably well um, fastened, but it's not a really good solution. So we only bought one of these nodes because it's just not that great. But what we ended up uh, buying more of is the last one that I would show you. So I will switch over to this. So this, this node is used, it's in the cluster, but it's not my favorite node. So let's look at the last one. And now to the last unit here. We have the MSI Cube 5 Mini PC with a Celeron 525U, 4GB of memory, which was what we wanted, what we needed, and 64GB of uh, SSD as an M2. Uh, and it also has Wi Fi and, and had a Windows li license. But I'm running Debian on these, so I don't need that. It's a pretty nice unit as well, has some connections in the front and has a couple of connections in the back. As you see, you have both uh, connections for HDMI and DisplayPort. I only use the HDMI, but it's really nice. I'm not really fond of DisplayPort because Windows is really strange with it. If you connect something in a DisplayPort, Windows finds a new monitor for some reason. So if you have a monitor set up and one of them uh, remo is removed, it rearranged all your different uh, uh, screens and you no don't know where they end up. So I don't really like that. But um, yeah, I only use the power and the network on this unit as well. And if we look at the bottom here, we have four screws. That is the screws that it stands on, which is a really nice detail that you can take them there. And if we lift the lid here, if I'm able to do that, uh, we actually see that the hard drive is uh, sitting in the lid. It's uh, something that we have screwed to the lid. And then we have connections down, which means that we can put a pretty large drive in here. Doesn't really matter that it's a bit thicker because yeah, you have the room. You can also see the actual hard drive here, the 64 gigabyte hard drive. So if I wanted to switch out the system drive, I can do that easily. We see the memory and we also see that we have an extra memory slot here. I don't know if the extra memory could interfere with the drive if we get this a bit thicker down here, but I think it should not matter. It should actually work there as well. Um, yeah, and in this unit, I actually have five terabyte Barracuda. So I found another unit on a Danish shop, which were a bit cheaper 
so it I, I think it was about 200 crowns so about 20 bucks or something cheaper and um, but it was five terabytes so I got one terabyte more but for less which was really nice so I have a couple of those in these units as well uh, so this was my favorite unit so far and um, there is actually a youtuber that does this mi uh, tiny mini micro series with a lot of different units he's more focused on could you game on it how good is the cpu and could you use it as a cluster for a kubernetes or something like that or router and and so on i'm more interested in the storage potential and none of the units he has uh, shown has a really good way to add a lot of storage in them um, and i haven't really seen if these little thicker drive could actually be mounted in those most of them have drive base which could make it harder to mount these thicker drives and uh, so these are the nodes in my cluster at the moment and if you see in my videos i usually have those in the background uh, running um, so I run, run some of my backups on these and I have them for general storage as well in some cases and, and they work pretty well in a Ceph cluster uh, so this is things that I ha uh, think you should look into if you uh, want to have a storage cluster uh, either you buy a big NAS and if you want to go into the Ceph realm and just have a test cluster for your own, then these units are really good. If you need them, need to be in a production environment, I would say have at least eight gigabytes per uh, hard drive or OSD in order to ensure a good throughput. But as this is just a test cluster and something that I'd run locally, I don't really have that much of a throughput so uh, a drive with just four gigabytes is just enough for me it works really well so i will integrate this again and i will come back to you with some final thoughts so that was my storage cluster and uh, <laughs> there is a lot of different units in there but i i think they are working pretty well I'm also looking into this series by, with the t tiny minor micro and see if I can buy any of those units and try those as well. It would be interesting to actually build out my cluster a little bit more, but this is what I have at the moment. And for my use case, that is enough. Uh, I hope that you found this video interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. Do you run any servers at home of this scale? Do you have any suggestions on other hardware that could be interesting for a Ceph cluster? Leave those comments down there as well. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.